Hey guys, welcome back. Dr. Sam here, helping you get closer to great skin days. Now, this week I am talking about the chest. I don't think I've ever seen a dedicated YouTube video to the chest, and yet this week in clinic, it's all anyone was talking about. <laughs> Now, this may well be because I have many established patients now where we've taken tremendously good care of this. And in summer, all of a sudden, people start wearing strappy tops and the chest comes into focus, not the neck, the chest. And I think that the chest is a particularly vulnerable place because we often don't think about putting product on there. And I'm, when I say product, I specifically mean sunscreen. Um, and it's an area that's naturally thin-skinned, so there aren't many sebaceous glands, and it's just terribly prone to wasp elasticity, um, thinning, degradation of collagen through sun exposure, and perhaps worst of all, brown spots. No one likes a speckled chest, do they? So what can we do about this? Um, now, the key things to remember, of course, are that good sun protection started at the right time essentially solves all of this. And when it comes to the chest, I think you really do have to think about the holy trinity of seeking shade, covering up, and wearing sunscreen. It's about all of those three behaviours together. Um, and the sooner you start this, the better. Um, this is an area that most of us want to look matching to the face. Um, but I think over time, it certainly can become clear that there's a discrepancy, that all the attention goes to the face and very little goes to the chest. To start your chest care as soon as is possible. Um, so all of you wearing sunscreen on your face, please do take all your jewelry off and make sure that whatever you do for your face, you extend down to your decolletage. It really will serve you well in the long run. Um, so sun protection is obviously key. And I think just be conscious that if you think of your face, it's about two palms in terms of surface area. For most people, their chest is the same. So that means using exactly the same quantities to treat the chest as you would your face and the neck again as a separate area. So I think it's often worth having a separate sunscreen that you're perhaps prepared to use a bit more generously, that might be a hydrating format um, because this area can often sort of tolerate a bit more moisture than you would perhaps want to put on your face because you're not dealing with cosmetics and oily T-zones. So go for a nourishing format, something like La Roche-Posay's Comfort Cream from their Anthelios range, I think is a great option. Um, or Flawless Daily Sunscreen, which is also hydrating and contains niacinamide. So be generous, lavish it with love, and if you can, skip the hydration step by choosing a moisturising sunscreen format. It would just make your life easier. So that's protection and prevention. And do remember that wearing sunscreen every day allows your skin to start the repair process without even beginning to talk about active skincare because it frees up the skin's resources to repair fine lines and wrinkles and even improve skin tone. So that's step number one. What else can you do? Well, I think that the active ingredients that work well for the face potentially will also work brilliantly for your chest. However, we do tend to have a tolerance issue because chests are more sensitive than the face. So again, a bit like the neck, I think of the skin there as not being dissimilar to the, the quality of the skin around the eye. So you need to handle it with a bit more care. You can't tend to go in all guns blazing with full strength retinoids that you might be comfortable using on your face. You have to go in more gently. So key things to think about are antioxidants to bolster the protective effect that you get from your sunscreen and you know like antioxidants like vitamin C and niacinamide for daytime and they have the added advantage of being very well tolerated and not only preventing damage but they can also improve pigmentation too. So they tend to be my go-to ingredients for daytime. Nighttime, we can think about niacinamide again. It's something that's appropriate to use twice a day. And we can think about newbie ingredient, bakuchiol, bakuchiol, whatever you want to call it, um, which has tremendous benefits in terms of anti-aging. It helps with blemishes um, and it also helps with pigmentation. And again, well tolerated. So something you can happily use up to 1% strength from the chest that you're likely to tolerate very nicely. What else can we do? Well, I think other considerations are the elasticity of the chest. So again, an area that's prone to sun exposure and one of the key problems with small but regular amounts of UVA exposure every day is that it damages our skin's elastin. So change in elasticity leads to sagging. It can cause that kind of 
you know, sort of dimpled appearance on the surface of the skin. Um, and that's where really a retinoid is going to help improve the quality of the skin in the chest. But you have to go in much more gently, as I said, than what you would use comfortably on your face. So whatever you're using your face, I would suggest dialing it down. And the best thing to do is to dilute your regular retinoid with a bit of moisturizer. And I would start off using something as low concentration as a quarter of what you do for your face. So if you're using a pea-sized amount on your face, mix that same amount with three times the amount of regular moisturizer, diluting it down, no actors in the moisturizer, mind you. And then you'll have a 25% strength product that you can happily start using on your chest. Go in less frequently, try using it every third day. Give it a couple of weeks if that's comfortable, try it every other day and so on until you build up to daily use or whatever is comfortable for your chest. So I think in, as an overview, we can use the same active ingredients in our chest, but we just have to be a little bit slower, but steady in terms of how we approach the skin. Final consideration for chest, how we sleep matters a lot. So if you've got sun damage in your chest and then you lie scooped up and everything's creased, guess what? Those lines are gonna eventually start to become entrenched and they're hard to treat because they're typically lines that don't occur naturally so they can catch the eye, um, particularly in the skin between the breasts. If you have large, have large breasts, it's a problem. Best things to do is to try to sleep on your back. You all know this, I think. But of course, lines that are formed through pressure spent, you know, through hours and hours of lying on your tummy are going to be really difficult to treat. And I really don't think there's a great solution other than prevention, so give that some thought. So there you have it, my approach to your chest. Um, have you thought about your chest recently? If so, let me know how you find these comments and tips in the box down below. Bye for now.